Hello fellow coffee botherers, in this video I'm going to be reviewing the Lamazocco Linear Mini. Yes, I finally got my hands on the iconic LMLM. Shop Coffee in Cambridge have been foolish enough to think that they're ever going to get this back from me. Just kidding, obviously I will have to give it back. I'll put a link to Shop Coffee in the description below, and if you do get in touch with them about the Lamazaco Linear Mini or any other machine, please don't remind them I've got this, because I'm hoping they'll forget. If you've been into the home barista thing for a while, you'll be aware of this machine. If you work in coffee as a roaster or a barista, for example, you'll definitely be aware of this machine, which is a smaller home barista version of the famous commercial machines. So firstly, to run through the specs. Size-wise, as you can clearly see, if you're the Terminator and you've got green writing or whatever coming up in front of your eyes, it's just a tad under 38 centimetres tall, almost 36 centimetres wide and just over 45 centimetres deep. It's a dual boiler machine with a big chunky 3 litre steam boiler and a more petite 175 mil brew boiler, filled via a heat exchanger to improve temperature stability. It's got a PID, an integrated group, not to be confused with a saturated group that you'll find on the Lamazocco GS3, by the way. It's got a 2.1 litre water tank, which I know from measuring it, as there are a range of reported water tank sizes online, so I thought I'd find out what the actual capacity is. It's got a rotary pump, so you can plumb it in if you wish, and personally, if I was going to own one of these, I'd definitely plumb it in, because filling a water tank is a thankless task. Why do it if you don't have to? It's got a no-burn steam wand with amazing steam power, which I'll get to shortly. A water tap which delivers water at approximately the temperature of the Earth's core, which again, I'll get to shortly. It's got a fairly big drip tray, a steam pressure gauge and a brew pressure gauge. It comes with the lovely Lamazocco weighted balanced porter filters, and you get a double one, which of course you'll use, and a single one as a nice little ornament, because who wants single espresso? And it comes with Bluetooth connectivity. So I'll just talk you through this very quickly. The obvious question about smartphone connectivity with espresso machines is whether it's a real usable feature or whether it's a gimmick. And while there are admittedly a couple of gimmicky features with the app, there are some real usable features. The most obvious thing for me is that you can set up a daily on and off schedule, as well as being able to change the auto standby time. You can view the brew boiler temperature and you can set the brew temperature, which I think is very handy in comparison to the adjustment wheel on the side. You can control pre-brewing, which is similar to pre-infusion, but not quite. It's more like blooming with a short pre-wetting phase from zero to five seconds and a wait time before the shot starts of also zero to five seconds. I'd assume that this can be changed on the app to allow line pressure pre-infusion if plumbed in, but I'm not completely sure. You can connect multiple machines if you've just won the Euro Millions and you've got an LMLM in your main kitchen and a GS3 in the entertainment suite, for example, and congratulations if that's the case. I will say though, pairing with Android at least was a horrible experience. Amazoko, you really need to sort that out. Even when I finally got it paired, it wanted me to add the Wi-Fi security details and password, but it was all greyed out. I resorted to a frantic barrage of random screen taps at gradually increasing pressures, and eventually that worked. So once you can get it working, I think the app is great. So now I'm going to pull a couple of shots with it so you can see it in action, and then I'm going to come back and tell you what I think. Let's make coffee. I am doing this from a bit of a weird angle, so bear with me. I'm using the 21 gram basket, so I'm dosing 21 grams. Try and get some of them in the actual dosing cup. Twenty-one grams.
just caught it. Look at that lovely espresso. A little bit fast, but this isn't a dialing in video, so I would tweak the grind slightly. But look at the crema on that. It's nearly all crema. Nice looking shot. Now it's not bad actually. Not far off dialed in. Now, you can witness the ridiculously fast steam power of the LM LM. Try and do it from this weird angle. And that's it. I've actually slightly oversteamed it because I'm still not used to the power of this machine. Not the best latter I've ever done. It'll do for this demonstration. And now I'm going to make an espresso. Twenty one grams. I'm not going to touch the grind because we were just about dialed in there, so I think we're okay. an espresso into these lovely Japanese cups. Again, looking nice. Nice. There we go. Got a double espresso and a flat white. Cheers. Okay, so you've seen the Lamazaco Linear Mini in action and you're probably wondering what I think about it. The answer, in short, I love it. The things I love about it, it feels like using a commercial machine, because it is basically a commercial machine. The build quality, the look of it, but it is very small for such a powerful machine. It'll fit under kitchen worktops. It's a very high quality commercial grade machine with the footprint of a kitchen grade appliance. The feel of these porter filters in the hand is definitely part of it. The weight of them, how well balanced they are, the Lamazocco branding. To me, these porter filters add something to the experience. Well, I should say porter filter, as I've never used the single one. The steam boiler power is insane. I had to get my son, Josh, who's a barista and uses a linear PB to teach me how to not completely overstretch and overheat the milk, as I just wasn't used to the power but you're talking about a few seconds from start to finish to steam the milk, as you saw. The hot water power is also insane in terms of the pressure and the temperature, but as I've mentioned, it's chuffing hot. If you're looking for drinkable Americano, you might want to leave a bit of space for cold water because the water is coming straight from the brew, sorry, straight from the steam boiler. 
I do like the feel of the brew paddle, although I do understand some of the confusion this produces in people who see that and assume that it must give you some control over pressure or pre-infusion, when actually, no, it's just basically a massive horizontal on-off switch. As you'll have noticed, the brew pressure gauge in this one is doing something strange. It sticks and I have to flap the paddle a couple of times to get the pressure needle down. I'm told there's probably just a pressure lock that needs sorting, but I'm sure Shop Coffee will do that when they get this back. You can adjust the pressure, by the way, but you have to take the back panel off and adjust a screw on the back to do that. The things I don't like about this machine, well, I'm not a fan of the position of the water tank really. Having to remove the drip tray to get to it, I found a bit of a faff. Well, that wouldn't bother me in the least because if I did buy one of these machines, I'd definitely have it plumbed in. I'm not sure I understand the brew temperature wheel on the side. It isn't brilliant. There are some reference points, but there are only a few, so it's, it's not that easy to change and to see what you're changing it to. So using the app is good from that perspective. Other than that, there's nothing else that I really dislike about it as such. I don't really see the need for the brew panel paddle, if I'm honest. Not that I dislike it, I just wonder if a brew button would have done the job just as well. Maybe then there would have been room to put a shot timer on the front, which I think would be a very nice addition. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the paddle is one of the things that differentiates the LMLM from many other machines. The obvious question, given that this machine is around the £4,000 mark, is, is the Lamazoco Linear Mini worth it? And the answer, I think, depends on who's answering it. There are cheaper machines that will, in my humble opinion, produce very similar results. The Sage or Breville dual boiler, for example, is roughly a third of the price, and I can tell you it's capable of amazing espresso and milk texture. But this machine isn't just about the end result, it's about the enjoyment of producing that result to the people who will enjoy it. If using an espresso machine to you is just means to an end to get espresso and espresso based drinks, then the LMLM probably isn't worth it for you. In exactly the same way that there are driving enthusiasts, people who love driving and have dreams about owning or driving a particular car, while there are other people who just see driving as a means to an end to get them from here to there and back again, unless they're not coming back, like if they're moving house, then they've just been going there, although they might come back again to pick up their mail if they're too tight to pay for a redirect. What am I going on about? Anyway, while some cars are made as true driver's cars for people who really enjoy driving and who dream about driving particular cars, and it's a similar thing with espresso machines. The Linear Mini isn't just a means to an end machine, it's about the experience, the look of the machine, the feel of the porter filters, in the same way that some people might, might dream about the Porsche or Ferrari or Aston Martin logo glistening in the center of the steering wheel. So my answer to that is yes. The Linear Mini is worth it to the person who it's made for. And you'll know if that's you because you'll be drooling over this machine. You'll have thought about buying one for ages and struggled to justify the cost. If you haven't done that and you're just looking for an espresso machine and ended up here because you've heard that La Mozaco Linear Mini are a good espresso machine, then whether it's worth it or not for you, I'd say is debatable. Depends on whether you'll get the enjoyment from using it or whether you're seeing the espresso machine as just a means to an end. In which case, there are much cheaper options. If you're asking, is it worth it in terms of intrinsic value, in other words, are you just paying over the odds for the Lamazocco brand, then yeah, it's not cheap, but this is a very well-built machine using expensive component components. And they hold the value very well too, which is something you need to add to the equation when you're figuring out whether something's worth the investment or not. But yes, there are other very good options for, for a similar price. There are other commercial one group machines that are cheaper than this, although you'll probably find that most of them aren't quite as compact. The final thing I'd say about the LMLM is that in my humble opinion, this machine is for more traditional espresso profiles. If you're working with medium roast and upwards, then great. If you're into the more new age, super light roasted espresso side of things, then I think you might be barking up the wrong tree with this machine. I've seen people modding these machines to operate more along the lines of the bigger sibling of the LMLM, the GS3, and the Slayer with super long pre-infusion uh, pressure profiling and 
and so on. But from what I can see, the mods for this are very expensive and complicated. If you're wanting to play around with that kind of thing, just keep in mind that the Sage or Breville dual boiler can do super long, low pressure pre-infusion straight out of the box. And if you want to go the whole hog with profile, the pressure profiling mod, you can do that with a quick, virtually free and completely reversible mod. Plus, there are machines that are made for this, like the GS3, which is almost double the cost of the LMLM, to be fair. But there's also a decent espresso machines, the decent espresso machines, which are designed for this. So there you go. That's my thoughts on the Lamazaco Linear Mini. Thank you very much for watching. And if you liked this video, then why not click here to watch another one? Also, please click the like button. Thanks. It makes the YouTube fairies happy and you don't want to anger the YouTube fairies. Don't forget to become an official coffee botherer. You need to click this image around here somewhere to subscribe and to become a fully accredited coffee botherer, also known as Patreon supporter. Just go to patreon.com forward slash coffee blog care. Tati bye.